Finding the right job takes time in a highly competitive job market. And finding the right person to fill a job also takes time for an employer. Let's take a look at how to get a job. Whether you're searching for your first job after college or looking to change careers, you'll have to know how and when to give prospective employers the kinds of information the preceding steps require. Expect to go through the following procedures. Analyze your strengths and restrict your job search. Look for the right places for a job. Preparing a resume tailored for each job that you apply for. Writing a letter of application and filling out job applications and going to interviews. Job counselors advise students to start planning for their careers several years before they graduate. The more you find out about what career paths you might want to take ahead of graduation, the better you'll be able to target the jobs that are right for you. Individuals changing careers or transitioning from the military to civilian sector also need to assess their experience, skills, and job goals. No matter your situation, you'll take several steps to help improve your chances of getting hired. Attend job fairs and interviewing workshops. Use social media and networking sites to learn more about your profession. Join and participate in professional organizations in your areas of interest. Find a mentor, someone in a field you might want to join, and do volunteer work to gain experience. Social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google Plus are essential tools to help you find a job and advance your career. Do not think of them only as personal media sites where you exchange news and photos with friends and families. These sites contain valuable information about the companies that might hire you. Companies also explore these sites for recruitment purposes. One of the most successful ways to land a job is through networking, so get out there, meet people, and communicate about yourself. A letter of recommendation is a document in which the writer assesses a person being recommended in terms of that individual's ability to perform a particular task or function. Should you see your letter of recommendations? You have a legal right to see your recommendation letters, but some employers believe that if candidates read them, their references may be overly complimentary and more inclined to withhold information. Also, some of your references may refuse to write a letter of recommendation if they know you'll read it. However, you may feel more comfortable knowing what your recommendation letters confirm. But before you make decisions about seeing your recommendation letters, get the advice of your instructors, placement counselors, or other employment guidance professionals. Be careful about who you ask to write letters of recommendation. Whether your recommendation letters are confidential or not, they can sell you or sink your chances, so select your references carefully. Ask the following individuals to be your references and write enthusiastically about your work, qualifications, and skills. Previous employers who've commended you in the past. Two or three of your professors who've assessed your work. Supervisors who've evaluated your job performance or community leaders or officials. Asking your current boss can be tricky when it comes to letters of recommendation. If your present employer is already aware that you're looking for work elsewhere, for instance if your job is temporary or your contract's about to run out, or you're working part-time, by all means ask for a letter of recommendation. However, if you're employed full-time and are looking for professional advancement or for a better salary elsewhere, you may want to not ask your current employer about searching for another job. Remember that letters of recommendation can be a challenge to whip up, particularly when in previous employers or people who know you want to craft something that's well-written, personalized, and truly does you justice in terms of your next endeavor. A resume is not your life history or emotional autobiography, nor is it a transcript of your college work. It's a factual and concise summary of your qualifications, convincing a prospective employer that you have the education and experience to do the job you're applying for. Regard your resume as a persuasive document of your professional qualifications. It's a billboard advertising you. What you include, your key details, the wording, the ordering of information, and the formatting are all vital to your campaign to sell yourself and land an interview. Prospective employers will judge you and your work by your resume. It's the first view of you and your qualifications. They expect that an applicant resume be honest, attractive, carefully organized, and relevant. 
you need to balance your education and experience. If you have years of experience, don't flood your prospective employer with too many details. You can't possibly include every detail of all your jobs in the last 20 or 30 years. Emphasize only those skills and positions most likely to earn you that job. Eliminate early jobs that do not relate to your present employment search. Combine and condense skills acquired over many years and jobs. Include relevant military schools and service. Knowing what to exclude from a resume is as important as knowing what to include. Because federal employment laws prohibit discrimination on the basis of age, sex, race, national origin, religion, marital status, and disability, among others, do not include such information on your resume. Here are some other details that should be left off. Salary demands, expectations or ranges, preferences for work schedules, days off or overtime, and comments about benefits. In addition, Exclude reasons for leaving your previous jobs, your photograph, your social security number, and information about your family. Also exclude your height, weight, hair color, eye color, and so on, sexual orientation, religious and political affiliations, hobbies, and interests, unless they're relevant to the job you're seeking. Let's take a look at parts of a resume that are critical building blocks to consider. First, your contact information. At the top of your resume, provide your full name, don't use a nickname, address, including your zip code, home and mobile telephone numbers, and email address. If your contact or academic address is different from your home address, list them and identify both. The contact information can be either centered, flush or left-right justified, and a combination of these approaches. The next section of your resume is all about the credentials, your education and experience as it relates to the job. Begin with your most recent education first and then list everything significant since high school. Here are some guidelines about listing your experience. Begin with your most recent position and work backward in reverse chronological order. List the company or agency name, the location, including the city and state, your job title, and the dates of employment. For each job activity, provide a short description of your duties and achievements. Include any relevant volunteer information that you might want to provide related to the job. Not every resume will have this section, but the following are employer-friendly things to include when it comes to achievements. Certificates or licenses you hold, memberships in professional associations, membership in community groups, and second or third languages you speak and write. List any civic honors and academic honors you may have won. You can include a references section, but I would suggest listing a simple statement that references are available upon request. But note, employers generally assume that these will be readily available, so the section may not be necessary. There are two primary ways to organize your resume, chronologically and by function or skill area. Let's take a look at both. The chronological sequence works especially well when you can show a clear continuity towards progress in your career through your employment and schoolwork or when you want to apply for a similar job with another company. A chronological resume is also appropriate for students who want to emphasize recent educational achievements. Depending on your experiences and accomplishments, you might organize your resume according to a functional or skill area. Sort your achievements and abilities into two to four key skill areas. Under each area, you'd list three to five points illustrating your achievements in that area. Functional and skill resumes are often called bullet resumes because they itemize the candidate's main strengths in bulleted lists. Some employers prefer a bullet resume, but they can also skim the candidate's list of qualifications in just as few seconds. This method or tactic might work well in your chronological resume as well. The following individuals would probably benefit from organizing their resumes by functional or skill area instead of chronologically. Non-traditional students who've had diverse past job experiences, people who are changing professions, individuals who've changed jobs frequently, and ex-military personnel re-entering the civilian marketplace. A resume is a document used by a person to present their background and skills. Resumes can be used for a variety of reasons, but most often they are used to secure new employment. Cover letters should be personable, professional, and persuasive, the three Ps. 
Knowing how your cover letter or letter of application and resume are different and work together are critical to your job search process. First, understand what companies are looking for and tailor your cover letters and resumes to their needs. The resume is a persuasive record of dates, important achievements, skills, names, places, addresses, and jobs. You should prepare several different resumes depending on your experience in the job market. Actually, you should prepare a different resume for every job you apply for. Use templates of different natures to come up with these customized options. Your letter of application, however, can be more personal. It introduces you to prospective employers. Because you must write a new, original cover letter for each prospective employer, you may write or adapt many different letters. Each letter of application should be tailored to a specific job. It should respond precisely to the qualifications the employer seeks based on the job posting. The letter of application can make the difference between you getting an interview and you being eliminated from early consideration. It should convince a prospective employer that you will use the experience and education listed on your resume in the job that he or she is hoping to fill. As you prepare your cover letter, use the following guidelines. Supply all contact information as part of your heading. Make sure your letter looks attractive. Send your letter to a specific person and emphasize you attitude. Here are some suggestions on how to prepare the various parts of a cover letter successfully. The first paragraph of your letter of application is your introduction. It must get your reader's attention by answering the following questions. Why are you writing? Where or how did you learn of the job? What is the specific job you're applying for? And what is your most important qualification? Make sure to begin your letter by stating directly why you're writing to apply for that job. The body is the next section of your cover letter, comprises one or two paragraphs, and cites evidence from your resume to prove you're qualified for the job. You might want to spend one paragraph on your education and the other on experience, or combine your accomplishments into one paragraph. You could also use a bulleted list of reasons why your talents match directly to the needs of that organization. The purpose of your last paragraph, the closing, is clear-cut, to convince the reader to call or email you for an interview. Keep the closing paragraph short, about two or three sentences, but be sure it fulfills the following four important functions. Briefly emphasize once again your major qualifications. Ask for an interview or a phone call. Indicate when you're available and thank the reader. The cover letter is a tool to help introduce yourself in a memorable, personal way during a job application. A well-crafted cover letter goes over information on your resume and expands this information for the reader, taking them on a guided journey of some of your greatest career and life achievements. A job interview is a type of selection test that involves a conversation between a job applicant and a representative of the employer. Interviews are one of the most popularly used devices of employee selection. Before you go to an interview, prepare by doing the following. Do your homework about the company. Show that you're interested in the organization by learning as much as you can about it. Go to their company website, their Facebook page, or other social media and talk to people who know the organization. Review your job description carefully. Research the job. What does it entail? What skills do you have that directly relate to it? Prepare a one or two minute summary of your chief qualifications. You'll most likely be asked to summarize your education, experience, teamwork, professional goals, and so on during the interview. In doing so, identify how specific classes, course projects, jobs you've held, or community service have equipped you for the position and the company as well. Be prepared to provide examples. I often recommend having three points that you want to carry through the themes of your interview. Brush up on your business etiquette. Silence your phone before the interview. Remember the names of the interviewers and others you may meet. Pay special attention to acceptable ways of communicating with international audiences during your interview. An interviewer may ask you questions that call for examples, illustrations of you handling a problem with a coworker, a customer, a vendor, or so on. Be prepared with explicit instances to show yourself in a good light. The following questions are typical of those you can expect from interviewers, with advice on how to answer each of them. Most of them are behavior-based interview questions. Tell us something about yourself. Emphasize achievements that show that you're responsible and eager to contribute and learn more about your profession and potential employer. 
Why do you want to work for us? Recall any job goals you have and apply them specifically to the job under discussion. What qualifications do you have for the job? Point to educational achievements and relevant work experience, especially IT skills. What specific experience do you bring that can carry over to the job for us? Mention any situations that are directly relevant to the duties and responsibilities of the prospective job. Describe your leadership strengths, skills, and accomplishment. Describe instances when you have shown these qualities as part of your duties with any past employers or organizations. What could you offer us that other candidates do not have? Why should we hire you? Say enthusiasm, being a team player, problem-solving skills, ability to meet deadlines under stress, etc. Emphasize that you're diplomatic. Why did you attend this school? Be honest. Talk about locations, costs, or programs. Why did you major in this particular major? Don't simply say financial benefits. Concentrate on professional goals and interests. In what course did you receive your lowest grade? Don't say that you could have done better or that you tried hard. Instead, talk about failures, accept them, and ultimately talk about what you've learned. What's your greatest strength? Talk about your talents, naturally reoccurring patterns of thought, feeling, and behavior. What's your greatest shortcoming? Be honest here and mention it, but then turn to ways that which you might address that strength and manage it in the workplace. Why did you leave your last job? Say I return to school full-time, or I move from Jackson to Springfield, or say that you're changing professions. Why did you leave your current job? Again, never attack an individual or an organization. Say your current job has prepared you for the position you're now applying for. You will likely have the chance to ask interviewers questions. Watch for appropriate cues and be prepared to say more than, no, I don't have any questions, which suggests that you might have indifference or lack preparation. Here are some legitimate questions to consider asking. Will there be any safety, security, or proficiency requirements I need to meet? When is the starting date? Is there a probationary period? If so, how long? How often will my work be evaluated? What types of on-the-job or professional training are required or offered? Are there any mentoring programs in place? Is there support for continuing education? What do you regard as the top priority? Would you give me some examples of how or where I might collaborate with fellow employees or my boss? How will I be evaluated in terms of success on the job? Who will do the evaluating? What's the most important things I can accomplish during my evaluation period? What's the next step in your hiring process? Interviews are one of the most popularly used devices for employee selection. 